Okay, so g'day everyone. Welcome back to another fly time tutorial. So in this video, what we're doing to tie up is uh, essentially a worm pattern um, that uh, that I use periodically. It's it's you know it can be handy in its places. Um, I do it in two different styles. So I do this one, which is obviously a worm, and then pretty much the same pattern, but uh, but in black to sort of represent a leech. Um, there's really sort of no difference between the two other than the material um, and I'll talk you through that as we go. So it's a pretty straightforward fly to tie um, and we'll get on into it. So the hook I use for this, or the hook I use, I'm using for this one is one of the new Daihuku HDO hooks in size 8. Um, and uh, so, so I find this, this looks, you know, pretty good fly, uh, size hook to do this pattern in. Barbless hook, uh, it's got a nice bend in it. And uh, to the bar, uh, to the hook, what I've added in is um, about twenty odd wraps of point zero two zero inch uh, lead wire. So two or, uh, lead wire. Now you could go up and down lead wire, obviously to vary the weight. Um, you don't want to go too thick or too heavy. Um, otherwise, you just start to create bulk in the fly, and you sort of it becomes counterproductive. So generally, I'd say somewhere you know. To, 2.025, uh, 0.020 or 0.015, somewhere in there is probably not a bad range to work on. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, the hook and the, and the lead weight to it. Now, for the first part, I find it a little bit easier to sort of reorientate your hook. So I'm just going to turn it over so I can access um, the back end and the bend um, a bit better. So the first thread I'm going to use is uh, Simplify Wax Thread. Um, it's a pink one. It doesn't have to be simplified, but you just want to, you know, either a white or a pink thread um, to start with. Um, I'm going to finish the fly in this thread anyway, so that's why I use pink. But uh, but white would be perfectly satisfactory. And I'm just going to come in. I'm going to catch in behind that lead, um, and I'm going to take this thread and the tag sort of right down into the bend. And I'm just going to trim this away. And get rid of that waste. Oh, caught up. Here we go. And um, and then I'm just going to come back up. So the first thing I'm going to catch in here is the is the ribbing material, and the ribbing material is just uh, monofilament, some really fine monofilament. I'm using some seven by monofilament tippet material. I'm going to catch that in um, right in behind that lead with a few turns just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna take this tag in and I'm gonna bring it back, all back towards the bend. And I'm gonna tie the whole lot in. Now the reason I do this is so that um, when I go to actually use it to rib the fly, it has less of a tendency to try and wanna pull out um, of the of the uh, thread because you know, you sort of only got thread on the monofilament. So I'm just gonna come in with my scissors and I'm gonna trim away that tag in, just tidy that up and then continue on and probably come back a little bit and build up a bit of a taper back to that lead. A little bit of a dint in that lead there, right on. So the next material and the outer casing, if you like, of the actual fly itself is uh, this stuff and it's self-fusing silicon tape. Um, this one's Tommy tape, made in the USA. I don't know if you could probably read it in there. Um, but it's self-fusing silicon tape, clear one. And uh, all I do from that is I you know, cut off a length and then I cut away a, a strip using a scalpel and a ruler so that I end up with a piece of the tape about two millimeters wide. Now, elsewhere on the, um, on the channel, there's a, there's a video that talks about the self-fusing silicon tape in detail, so I won't go too far into it here. But the important thing with this particular this fly, particularly if you're doing the uh, the worm version, is to just check to see what your tape, how thick your tape is. Now, some of those, some of the silicon tapes, um, they taper off to the edges of the tape, so it's a bit thinner on the edges as it is in the middle of the tape. And if you can get thinner material, that's sort of what you're after. So a thin piece of self self fusing silicon tape about two millimeters wide. I'm just gonna come in and catch that in directly behind that lead and use it to start to fill out that taper of the lead. I'm gonna come down and 
tie that in all the way back down to where I had finished with the monofilament. I'm going to come back up just to make sure that's nice and secure. I'm going to do a few more turns just to build it out a bit. And then I'm going to come in with my whip finisher. And I'm just going to do two or three turn whip finish here to lock off that thread. And then trim that waist or trim the thread away. And I'll put my pink thread to the side for a second. So I'm just going to come in and reorientate my hook now back to the sort of final position I want it to be in. And then the uh, next thread I'm going to use is, <clears throat> is this stuff. So this is, um, you know, sort of uh, uni stretch type material. So you can see how it's performing there. Um, if you haven't got this or you don't like using this, then you could use sort of some other flat thread. The reason I use this is because I'm going to colour it and um, this takes the uh, markers really quite well. So whatever thread you're going to use, make sure that you can um, use a marker on it. So something white would be ideal, um, and a white th flat thread. Anyway, I'm going to come in, I'm going to catch this in just behind or just in front of the, the lead there, and I'm just going to sort of go backwards and forwards and gently create a ramp here that comes up onto the lead. And you'll see I'm going sort of forward a few turns and then come back over itself until I get to a point where I can comfortably duck up on the lead. And then I'm just going to flatten that thread out and use it to go over the top of the lead. Now, you don't have to be very, you know, sort of precise in the covering. I'm just going to trim away this waist here. Um, it, you know, because it's not a big issue if a little bit of that lead shows through. You want sufficient material on there or sufficient thread on there so that you can get the colour into the fly. Um, so this is sort of more about putting a, I guess you could say almost like a canvas down really. Um, and just checking that other side to make sure I'm sort of getting some good coverage there. And uh, really just putting down enough material so that when you mark it up with the markers, you get some good coverage. And you get some good colour in there. Let's see how that's going. So I'm just going to keep bringing that down. And flatten it out and sort of make my go back up here a bit. There we go. Create that effect there. And I'm going to come all the way down with this to about you know about this point just behind the just behind the eye mill or so behind the eye and then I'm going to do a couple of turns of whip finish and lock that off and then trim away that thread so that's the underbody of the fly more or less done and so from here we're just going to mark it up now the markers that you use is entirely up to you and colorings they need to be alcohol markers and permanent markers but the colours that uh, you use are completely up to you. So for this particular fly, I'm using this selection of colours. So a sort of a ready, crimsony, well, I don't know what sort of colour you want to call it there, a lighter pink, a bit of a purple, and a bit of a purpley blue. So the rule of thumb for this is to start light and go to dark. So the first colour I'm going to use is this pink, and this becomes the underbody colour. And I'm just going to go through and, and colour up this fly, all this uh, body material, and I'm going to cover it up with this pink. Now, the, what you find particularly with this stretch material is that the colour sort of runs into it, which is almost exactly what you're after. Don't worry if it looks a bit too transparent, it, it'll be perfectly fine once you get finished. But you want to basically put down a good undercoat or undercover of that pink. And that forms the basis of the fly. Now, the other important part for doing that initial first colour uh, and doing the light one is with the alcohol markers, particularly like sort of these sorts of markers, they run, one, particularly in this material, it starts to run. So by having a light full cover, then what you get is the marker 
will start to bleed into it as you go a bit darker. So the next color I'm using here is just a red, and I'm, I'm just sort of going through and, and putting in some darker areas, you know, largely randomly on the fly. Um, probably a little bit more towards the front and the back versus anything across the middle, because I'm going to use a darker marker on there anyway. But really, I'm just tapping it and letting it bleed through and onto itself, and it creates that pinky red sort of effect. Next color is the purple. So the purple, what I'm looking for here is is a darker band in around the bend here, and I'm just going to tap that and sort of dab this purple in so it builds up. Um, I don't want to go crazy and make it too heavy. Um, and I want to sort of touch it, which allows it to bleed into itself and and then sort of create some effect. You can probably do a few little darker bands down around the place. And, and so you end up with something that looks a bit like this, with some banding. And, uh, and that's that. And then the last colour we're going to do is, is this darker sort of purpley blue and be very centric here on the band and really create this dark sort of patch there. So that's that's it. And that's the effect you're after. And you can play around with, with the colours and and you know sort of work out how what effect want you like and what colours work for you and and basically do you know sort of whatever sort of tickles your fancy I guess. But um but in the end that's that's sort of what you're after. So you're after this pinky ready sort of a body with a blurry band in there. Um, the band gives it a little bit of coloration change so it can start to sort of act as a, uh, a bit of a trigger. All right, so once we've marked it up, colored it up, um, I'm gonna come back in with my pink thread and catch that in directly behind the eye and lock that thread down and then just trim away this waste. All right. Now, what you might find here is, is to come in and do a half hitch or a single turn of whip just to hold that thread so that it doesn't bounce around too much while you do the rest of the fly. So the first material coming over is is this self-fusing silicon tape. So the important thing with self-fusing silicon tape is it does exactly that. It, it fuses to itself. So you, you really need to avoid it, avoid letting it touch itself too much um, and it'll fuse together in a few seconds and it'll be a real sort of pain to get apart. But Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to do a turn right down in the bottom here, back in on itself, and then in a slight overlapping turns, I'm just going to wrap this fu fusing silicon tape all the way forward. That's all it is. Now, you don't, you don't want too much of an overlap, but you do need a little bit of an overlap so that the tape will fuse to itself. And, uh, and seal itself in basically. And so what you can see from with the clear tape is that it sort of starts to blend in the body colors and the body materials. It gives it that little bit of sort of translucency, I guess. Um, and, and it goes from there. I wouldn't necessarily rush out and say it makes it look like a worm, but, uh, but it gives it the impression of, and that's good enough. So you just work that forward, more or less sort of slight overlapping turns all the way to the back of the head, back of the eye. Catch that in with a couple of turns of thread and we can sort of lock that silicon off. Now, to, now the, I suppose there's one thing to say here, you know, don't be tempted to make you use, uh, you know, cut a really long strip of the silicon and try and do two or three flies out of it. You, you can use it, you know, you can put it aside and reuse it, but the trick with um, the silicon is that if you get it too long, it has too much of a tendency to sort of catch in on itself and, and double it up. So just, you know, cut, cut at a length, you know, three or four inches long, enough to do the fly um, and leave it at that. So having brought that silicon forward, I'm again going to come in and just do a single hitch or whip just to hold that thread. And then the next thing I'm bringing up is the monofilament. And really all we're doing is here is just basically trying to follow the silicon. It's not critical that you do. You want overlapping turns, probably about a millimetre, and it'll bite in a little bit and 
um, sort of help support the silicon, but also, you know, in some instances, create that segmentation effect or enhance that segmentation effect. And you're just going to bring that all the way forward, just in turns. Um, don't have to be super specific with it. And then we're going to catch that mono. Just get one behind there. It's a bit hard to see in the light. Once I'm happy with that, I'll trim that away. And then just a little bit of a tidy up and a whip finish. So I'm going to do two or three turns here to whip finish and lock it down. And then another couple, just to be sure. Directly behind the eye. Take the tension, trim away the thread. And that is it. Now, if you choose to or you want to, you can come in and maybe give this thread a bit of a dab just to take out the complete pinkness of it. But, uh, but by and large, that's the silicon worm. So to do the, um, pretty much to do the leech pattern, um, it's, it's the same process. Of course, we're not using markers, but what I do use is I use this, which is black self-fusing silicon tape. So for the leech pattern, really all you need to do is get your lead on your hook, tie in your rib, uh, in some instances, you might not even need a rib. Tie in a rib, tie in the silicon, build the body, tie it all off, and then just wrap the silicon over, and that's what it forms. Um, a sort of a leech pattern, so it's pretty straightforward. All right, so that's the uh, that's the worm, silicon worms. Um, hopefully they work for you. Thanks for watching. Tight lines.